Ovida, I'm Box Live. I am Sisters in Smoke. And today we have Global Sales Director, Brand Ambassador, and who I call the heiress to the Quesada Cigar Empire, Raquel Quesada. Hi! Hello, how are you? <laughs> it feels so nice to be in the Dominican, but not in the Dominican. I know. <laughs> well, we're going to see each other very soon. Very soon. Next week, I will see you. Yes. So um, we'll just jump right in here. So it pretty much goes without saying that you've held quite a few positions at Quesada Cigars, tobacco purchasing, global sales director, brand ambassador. And uh, so what piques my interest is that sometimes I feel like people that start their own brands and, and even consumers, they kind of skip right over one of the most important parts of how we get to... Um, indulge in such a meditative experience. So if you could walk me through how tobacco purchasing works. Okay, let me give you a little bit of background on how I got there first. Um, well, hello everybody and welcome. <laughs> and thank you, Sister Smoke, for this opportunity. Um, well, I've been in the factory for 21 years now. And um, I used to study abroad and then I came to the Dominican Republic because I thought that it was I was ready to come and help out. And um, 2000, February 2000, I started at the factory. And uh, in 2002, um, sadly, my uncle and my cousin and my and the general manager of the factory um, passed away in a very uh, tragic accident. So I really had to step up on my duties because I was I was in the process of learning for those two years. And I was um, hand in hand with Fajardo, which was the general manager, and learning everything from um, stripping and classifying tobacco and fermentations and all this. But it was very, it was very slow um, process because I was learning. But when this happened, then I had to step up very fast on all the duties that had to be done, and I ended up in production. Um, so. Are you there? Yes. I'm here. Yes. Okay. And then, um, so I started working in production and with the cigar makers, and but I did all the process from the beginning to end because my father always says that you have to know what's going on in every single department because when you're up, then somebody comes and tells you something. Mm -hmm. You need to know really what's going on. And then Absolutely. I, 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 even, I even made cigars. I'm not very good at it though, but I can roll them. <laughs> Um, so then afterwards, so the purchasing process c comes hand in hand with the making of the cigars. So I started um, going to the suppliers that we had at that time, but there's many ways of doing it, or maybe three ways of doing it. You can either um, buy them um, directly to suppliers that have tobaccos from different seeds and different parts of the world. You can do the growers directly, Okay. We have also different seeds and tobaccos from different places. And also you can grow. Um, we have done um, a combination of everything <laughs> throughout the years. But uh, right now what we most do is buy from the suppliers. We have obviously great relationships here in the Dominican Republic and other countries like Nicaragua, Honduras. Yep. Um, obvious, obviously, guys. Um, we mentioned uh, Monica is like my sister from another mister. Yes, yes. <laughs> and buy tobacco from her. Um, but we have a few different suppliers that have um, different seeds from different countries. And that way, the blending, it's more um, tempting. Awesome. It's funny that you mentioned it because I was going to ask you if you guys purchased tobacco from native tobacco farms in Monica Kellner. Um, for those that don't know, Monica Kellner <clears throat> owns a tobacco leaf sorting company, right? So is it is it located in the Dominican? Where is yes, it? Yes, very close actually by here. So every time um, I'm go I go and, and see tobacco, I'm not in that department per se right now because somebody else does it, but I do go with him okay. at times um, and I go have a coffee with Monica and then we go see the tobacco. So it's fun and you know we always try to see each other as much as we can. So I go uh, mm -hmm. with 
the person that's in charge, and then we go see the tobacco. It's, it's like five minutes away from here, here in Lise, in okay. Santiago, Dominican Republic. And we also do like other um, suppliers that are family businesses too, and in other countries too, like the Placencias too, like, that are very close to us. Uh, we also buy tobacco from them, fillers and binders. Um, okay. and, then, and then the wrapper is other, another whole story. We also grew oh, like <laughs> we also grew on the in 2018 19 we grew um the first for the first time wrapper here in the Dominican Republic and we're saving it for something mm -hmm. special that might come. <laughs> That's an insight. It makes me so excited. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so speaking of tobacco, okay, I'm gonna light up but I want you to choose the cigar that I'm going to smoke, okay? okay. So I have a 1974. Oh my God, that's my favorite. And I smoked that yesterday. I can smoke this every day. Um, I have the Casada 40. Oh, the But sound. I'm going to advise against yeah. it. Oh, yes. yeah, I love that cigar, oh my God. You got excited, I'm going to have to stuck that back in my pocket. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> And then I do have the Vega Magna, which I've actually never smoked. You never smoked, smoked this one? Oh. Okay, you can do yeah. that. And then, I'll be smoking. And then I have, yeah. Uh, you have a okay. keg. No, do the Vega Magna then. Okay, because I haven't had this one either, but I heard this is quite the um, the experience. Let's do the Vega Magna. And then I'm smoking a 1974 six by 52, which is one of the new sizes that's coming up for PCA. Yes. So and we can talk what about size, what's, what size is that, Raquel? Six by fifty. It's a Toro. It's six by fifty-two. Okay. So let's get it started. Hopefully, uh, YouTube Verse is lighting up with us. Yes. Okay. Let me know if you guys are smoking out there or what you plan to smoke. Hopefully, it's a Casada, right? I was about to say that. <laughs> Hopefully I can start up. So I want to ask you something that's been, I won't say going around, but amongst my cigar group, I'm friends with a couple people who love to hold on to, uh, have possession of cigars that um, are no longer made or the blend has been tweaked to keep the production running. And so, which is why I asked you about, you know, tobacco purchasing. So small to big conversations around cigars and sizes, but in limited quality, right? So when the run is over, it's over. My my assumption is that it's over because there's no more tobacco, right? Like say for instance, the Caldwell Anastasia with the yellow ribbon or the Crown Hits Mil Diaz and the Moreva, um, size or the Davidoff anniversary 2016, which I also love. So if Quesada, is there a cigar or blend outside of the Fonseca, because we know that you guys uh, sow that to my fathers, that the tobacco is gone. And if you see these sticks out here, get them now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know. What else do I need yeah. to get my hands on? For example, we have, we have had, um, the Casada 70th anniversary when my dad uh, was seven years old. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. That was four years ago. Um, they, it had two sizes, Billy Coso and Toro. Those okay. might probably you can find around. Oktoberfest okay. from years before. Although we're going to be coming out with the New York Tour Fest that we can talk about it a little later. Um, but it's either like if you have um, a limited edition, then it's limited. But then if you have an ongoing blend that you need to figure out the whole process for the tobacco and you don't run out of them so you don't get into trouble, like six months before you know like some tobacco is going to be running out. You mm -hmm. need to go into your inventory, onto your tobacco inventory, and see what might, or start trying, what might be uh, something similar that would, when you overlap that tobacco, it doesn't ruin the whole blend. So it's it's a very 
you know, curious process. You really have to be on top of it and know like what the blend, which blends are you making, which blends are ongoing, what tobacco you have on inventory. So thank God here um, in Casal Cigars, we have SAP uh, system. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but no. it's like a really, um, it's like a very uh, automated system on the computer. And then you can see like everything on spot. I mean, all the inventories and everything you, you are on top of it every by the minute. Okay. That's something like, uh, well, probably people that know, but SAP, it's like a very, very like known um, system that to run like businesses and it's very prestigious. So we're on that, uh, I can probably say. <laughs> And so okay. we can be like top of all the tobaccos and inventories and everything on the spot. And so we're we're good on that. So we okay. can see what we have, what we don't have, uh, what could be substituted by what, and then we start trying, and then we overlap. So that way, it's not it doesn't ruin the whole blend that you've been that you've been having for so many years or so many months or whatever. So when you guys, so when you guys do that, do is there an announcement that the blend is, you know, uh, has moved on um, to another no, direction, no. or do do consumers normally just know right away, this this is good, but this is different. Well, no, because the thing is that you try to make it as smooth as possible. You would never know. Yeah. Okay. So okay. because you really have to make an effort to make it happen as it was. And that way you have to try, you have to do a lot of blending, you have to make a lot of uh, tasting panels. <laughs> so yeah. that way it's not that, it's very smooth and you wouldn't even realize. Okay. Well, but that's all programmed. That's all programmed. Okay, <laughs> got you. Well, yeah. Pharaoh Blackwell is asking you if you could give Anubi a general idea of what to expect from a Quesada cigar and also to which cigar from your portfolio would you suggest for a first time smoker? It's me for a first time smoker. Okay, so our cigars are not or haven't been because now it's changed. Um, they're, they're not for like full body cigars. We're more into the medium. So for us, for a person that's starting, it's a really good choice to, to make to take a casada because it's it's not gonna you know kill them or power them or just don't come back to cigars because they're too strong and they're you know I don't I don't feel that I want to but uh, for example the casada seva privada for me it's a perfect um, start um, even the nineteen seventy four. Even it's a little bit on the medium to full, but it's not gonna, yeah. you know, it's not gonna give you that um, strength right away. So it's enjoyable for the person that's starting. Um, even the Q42, I would say that they could they could try to. I mean, and on the Casada line, I think you're safe if you if you're yeah. the that um, newbie, like he says, um, okay. on the cigar world. I think Casada is the best choice. To start out, I think, yeah. I think so too. So speaking of blends to smoke, you've mentioned this before, um, but during your interview uh, on the Light 'Em Up Lounge with Reinhardt, there is a cigar that bears your name alongside Papa Q. What is the name <laughs> of that cigar? Because you know, every time you mention it, I was like, did she ever say what it was? I'm in the cigar. I'm in the humidor looking for it. <laughs> I think I, I think I did mention it on the on his. But um, I mean, it's it's a Fonseca, so it's no longer in the market. But it's the Cubano Limitado, and that's like a really fun story that I'll tell you like, really fast. Um, oh, maybe I do have it. Wait, you just—I think I do have your cigar, but I don't see your name on it though. The thing is, like, it was the box that had uh, me and my father's name like on top on a sticker, like that is sealed the box. Is it? So is I said, it said one exactly. Yes! Oh my God, yes. you have it. <laughs> I have it. I That's it. amazing. I Look at that. Now I'm never smoking it. Not unless I can, if I can find another one, I'm not, this is going in the acrylic humidor, the don't touch one. Okay, got it. Yeah, so. you have to don't touch. So, Cubano Limitado, guys. Okay. 
she tweaked this yep. blend. Okay. Yes. It was like when I kind of started, probably I was mm -hmm. in my early years and my dad was still, you know, very hesitant to any ideas. <laughs> well, he was always like that. But um, so he, he always told me what to do, like on the blending. He would write it on a little piece of paper. He would call me on his phone. He had like a microphone that you could hear the whole factory. That was in, a, in, in our other factory. And his extension was 231. So he would go, Raquel Casada, 231. And I was like, oh my God, you had to run? Because that other factory had like two, two stages. So sometimes you were like in the end of the factory and you had to like run. Because if, if you were not there like in less than five minutes, he would call you back again. So, <laughs> so I was like, yes, and now please, I'll do this plan. So I go, but I tweaked it and put a little bit of something else. So when I did the cigars, I put them on his desk and I, desk and I ran. You ran? I ran, literally. I was like, oh, here they are, whoops, and I ran. So I shut the door and I leave. So like in, in about some time, he starts calling me again on this thing, on this, microphone thing and um he goes like what did you do what did you do to my blend what did you do like, what did you do? I'm like oh i, I kind of tweaked it a little he was like you know what i love this we're gonna come up with this one instead of mine <laughs> then i think like the opportunities open up a little bit for us uh, that's so, nice it must be fantastic to be able to and, and i'm i I'm not there yet to be able to smoke something um, and really be able to zero in on the differences of a profile enough to know that in a split second, this is not, this is not it. This is not mine. You know, I have a lot, I have a lot to go still, but he yeah. is really amazing on it. I mean, you would, he could, you can blind taste, taste him and you, he would know what he's smoking, like what seed from what country, if it's Visa, if it's Ligero, if it's Seco, it's really amazing. And you know what? Now, now, what that, you mentioned of... it, now that you mentioned it, I'm going to try to do some some wine tasting um, these days because I haven't done it for a little bit and see how he's doing and test him now. <laughs> listen, listen, I need to know. how. So if you do the blind tastings, right, are you smoking cigars in full or, or, or would you smoke the yeah. cigar in pieces mm -hmm. like the wrapper, the binder, the filler? Yeah, Would we you... do like specific, um, just okay. the full, um, okay. just to taste. We do that every other week, just to see how the tobaccos are doing, and um, you know the visas are visas, the lijeros are lijeros, and we're always trying. And even like if we buy tobacco, and it comes in, we also do the same. We do like the surullos. I don't know, if, like it's something like it's just like the, it's like a Cuban, Spanish name that that we use here but i don't think a lot of people use it because i've, I've meant it's so it's called sorullos which is only like 100 percent of this specific filler or 100 percent of this specific seed from this country and and we smoke that all, every other week so we know that what we're blending is yeah. it is what it is but that's a good advice carlos and enrique we smoke that all the time <laughs> so like in these days i'm gonna test my dad and see you Oh, I'm sorry, to that, Mr. Q, because I can't call him my daddy here either. <laughs> you have to call him Mr. Q? Yeah, because there's this, there's this story. Like, I just got in, like, probably, like, a month. I was, like, just started. And we're, like, in this meeting outside this office. And I'm like, oh, you know, Dad, this and this. And he looks at me, and he goes, okay. He didn't, he didn't say anything at, that, at the moment. But then he goes, like, and then he has this little thing with his finger. And Michael Hercules is really good at it. When we're at Vegas... Tell him to tell him to tell you how he does. It. He goes like, oh, like, he goes like, and I'm like, yes. He goes like, oh, I'm not your father around here. I'm Mr. Q. I'm like, okay, sorry. Lesson learned. <laughs> where where is Mr. Q? I need permission to call him Papa Q. Okay, because oh, I've been saying it. Papa <laughs> <laughs> this <is> perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh. So Did along with. Get away with it. <laughs> I hope so. Otherwise, I don't want him to. I don't want him to pull me over and be like, "Come here, no. come here, Ben." <laughs> so along with the, Michael, we'll tell Michael. 
If I'm standing next to Michael, I think it might be okay. I can get away with it, maybe. So <laughs> along with the <laughs> along with the Cubano Limitado, are there any other cigars that you have had your hand on tweaking or blending? Um, well, the thing is, like here at Casada Cigars, we we have like a team that we do all the blending. Obviously, my input is in every blend and every new cigar that comes out. And even on the overlap that we talked about, I mean, we, I'm always smoking with them, but it's a team effort, you know? Uh, and my dad is also involved uh -huh. and we do that all the time. So I would say yes and no. <laughs> yes, because I'm always, I have my input, but no, because it's a team effort. And here at QC, um, I think we're like in our peak state. Uh -huh. And we're like blooming right now. So blooming. I think yes. together we make like this amazing team. I love the team of you guys do work part. fantastic together. <laughs> and speaking of team and speaking of blends, PCA is next week. And their word on the street is that it has been 10 years since Oktoberfest, since the release yeah. of Oktoberfest. I yes. personally only own one of them and I think it's 2016. Wow. But I, I know, <laughs> 2016. Uh, so let me ask you a question. What is the relationship between Quesada Cigars and Oktoberfest? How did- Well, that's another story. <laughs> because you know, like as I said before, my dad is not very into like new things or wasn't because now it's different. But we're talking about like 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, he wasn't very into it or new things or trying and, you know, this October 1st thing, it's like TJ, my cousin at that time working with us, um, he kind of proposed the idea and my father was like, no way, I'm not getting into that. No way, no way, no way. He's like, yes, we have to do this, something seasonal. We don't have anything like that in stock. Let's do it. It's going to be like a new thing. Mm -hmm. So we can like all of us convinced him, and then all these names that that you know that the October of us has, you probably go to Germany, and they they don't make any sense. But that was the the love of it, you know, like the, the intriguing of it. Yeah. So TJ was the one that come, came up with all these different names. So we convinced him, and um, we came out with the October Fest. But it was really tough because even the box, TJ wanted to put the mugs of the beer and then he wasn't, he wasn't at all convinced. And we struggled and struggled. <laughs> but at the end, we convinced him. And um, he would, if, he would, if he was here, he would say, oh, I'm the dinosaur at the end of the bus and nobody cares for me. And they always do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not that. <laughs> We struggled, and, but we convinced him. So at the end, that's like that's why. Uh, and then he's TJ was really into beers, so that's why he um, uh, paired that with a cigar. And then he that he saw, and and you know what? Great idea. You know, we're still here ten years afterward after that, and and we're we, we're coming out for the PCA for the new one because last definitely. year because of the pandemic we didn't come out, but then this year um, it's okay. going to be three sizes. And the only thing I could say is and i quote my father is this is the best one ever oh ever okay so then what's so special about this blend than the nine before it well we're gonna have to wait <laughs> no you got it okay okay you got it you gotta give me some where is papa q tell him i need i well, need a little, little 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 hint it's very similar to the first one released so I gotta go ten back. Is what you said. I gotta go nine backwards. <laughs> yes. To make it to ten. Okay. So well, it's okay. a San Andreas Mexican wrapper, mm -hmm. which one the one from the first time, and um, the fillers and the binders are all Dominican. But I think we we're gonna be able to, and then from there we can make a review of the Oktoberfest live from Vegas. <laughs> live from Vegas. Wait for me. <laughs> no, no, with you, for with, you. With, with me? You. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you know, the little concession stand, they'll have something to drink and we can just act like we're in Germany for about 20 minutes. Okay, we can do that. I promise you, I promise you. <laughs> so you have the Oktoberfest and then you have the Casa Magna 
You're smoking now, right? No, the one I'm smoking is a 1974 6x52 Toro, which is a new okay. size addition to the line. Addition to the line. Exactly. Um, and this Casal 1974, for me, it's like uh, with the blending of Dominican and Nicaraguan fillers, has a very sweet taste to it. And I and I love sweet, a little sweetness to it. Um, and then it's medium to, it's medium, mm -hmm. I would say medium to a little full. Uh, but it's very pleasant. Um, the aromas and the flavors are amazing. So I think it's um, good to go cigar. And then with this size, it's very enjoyable. 6x52 Toro. Well, I haven't had the Toro, obviously, but I really do enjoy the 1974 in the short Robusto. Oh, that yes. little thing is like a little thing medium, gives you a little full little flavor. Yes. Yeah, okay. Make sure you eat lunch with potato chips before you smoke that little thing. It is exactly. <laughs> it's fantastic, but it's not for the faint heart at all. So talk to me about talk to me about the Casa Bacna, right? Well, how the many Casa the what? The Casa Bacna, we have the Colorado, which is the one that, that's made in Nicaragua by the Placencia family. Okay. Um, in 2008, it was the number one cigar of the year. Nice. So we still have that ongoing and it's been very successful for us. It's one of mm -hmm. our top brands. Um, so now we decided um, to come up with the Casa Magna Liga F made in the American Republic. So it's the so first is, one. So this would be the fifth, right? The Colorado, the Jalapa the, Claro, uh, the, the Obscuro. Magnus, the, the, oh, Obscuro. the D Magnus, uh huh? Yes. Yes. So, so this would be the fifth, right? Uh -huh, exactly. So it's got, so it's Liga F, which is called for Fuerte, which is strong. And let me tell you, get a ribeye or a steak or something big. <laughs> <laughs> that's your pairing for today. Yes, that's the yes. pairing for today. <laughs> steak, cassava. <laughs> well, I'll make sure not to smoke that anywhere yeah. on the trade floor next yeah, week because. For, because as I said before, we're very characterized by just medium to full, you know. Yes. But but I think and and I truly give a testimony that this is forte. I mean, this is going to be something totally different from what Casella has done. And even though the Casamana Colorado is also a full body cigar, but okay. they're both full in their independent way. And if anybody, so so it's an yeah, Ecuadorian. We're, we're, using, we're also using um, Nicaragua was also on the fillers of this one, so you so might get a taste of that uh, Casamagna Colorado. You know, like a rem you can be reminded of, but but it has the Dominican added to the blend, which yeah. gives it a different taste. But strength wise, also that too. So, so get your stick, sisters and smoke. <laughs> I might have to do that from the privacy of my own home. <laughs> to smoke that, not on the fire escape, but in the house, just in case there are any casualties. <laughs> yes. We'll give it to you like, 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 and then we'll figure that one out. <laughs> oh gosh, somebody called the Uber for us both. So you also oh, are wearing- So, when, so this thing I have it comes in four sizes. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, go ahead, yeah. Um, it's Chorcha Toro Robusto and a Petit Corona. So the the the, um, the Robusto, the Chorcha, and the um, uh, Toro come in boxes of ten, and then the Petit Coronas, which I have here, let me show you, um, comes in packs of five. Packs of five. Okay. Yeah. And let me show you the Uber. Oh, that's pretty. That's beautiful. Yes. But what size is that? Is it the six by sixty-five? We always had it on the line. I'm gonna need the size. I'm gonna need the, the two sizes below. You're gonna need them all. Need them all. <laughs> I can't. I can't Stop. smoke I, a 65, Raquel. I need to know who in this world is doing that. Oh, I, well, I Let know quite you, a few. A lot of. I mean, more and more people are smoking like 70s and 65s and 60s. I'm not a fan of it, but if you're happy with it, enjoy them. <laughs> We're here to make them. Listen. <laughs> let us know how that goes, <laughs> guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like on the line for the since the first year and it's really successful people love it so well i i would 
I would gather that as somebody that does not drink beer, and I'm not anti beer, I just don't, I haven't been formally introduced yeah, to it. I, can, I, can I would assume, but I'm not that, you know, I like it. I would, I would assume that size might be perfect for that type of libation. So we will see. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe, we can, maybe we can smoke a 65 and then get the beer and see what happens. And we'll show you all. <laughs> Okay. Y'all, if I smoke a 65, you will know that the only place this is going to happen is on her Instagram. <laughs> 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 so you have plenty of hats, but lately you have been killing the gram with your social oh, messages. Yeah. You're just out here setting up parents letting the people know what they should be smoking and sipping you're giving us a whole lifestyle okay a whole lifestyle so if you could choose a pairing for each new stick that you have coming out of pca what would they be so if i'm smoking the Casa magna liga f yeah what am i, I drinking Casa magna liga f you could do like heart liquor maybe whiskeys or mm -hmm. Bourbons mm -hmm. um, on the Oktoberfest, the beer of your choice. Um, and you know what? The 1974, I'm, I'm a big fan of Lille. I don't know if you're familiar with it. No. It's like a um, liquor, uh, like an orange liquor. Um, it comes in like um, rosé and white. I like the white one. And it also comes like in a dark also version, but I like the white. Um, okay. And that it's like I was drinking it last night, and it was very pleasant. Hmm. So we we'll have to check that out. We'll have to circle back around and tell people what that is. Send me a yeah. picture of the bottle. Yeah, I'll send a picture so of the oh, bottle. I think we have it from last night, so I'll send it to you now. Cool. So I have a couple questions. So. You have worked very closely with Michael Hurtlocks. Well, the brother since, uh, never had. The, the <laughs> you know, always wanted boys, so he got his. <laughs> I think so. I'm pretty sure eight out of the ten times I've been to your factory, I, we, my, been Michael there. has been somewhere. <laughs> he really has. He's so. Over. Once upon a time, QC produced Ned Sherman. So you've seen Michael Hurtlock's uh, work firsthand, his work ethic, his incredible palette, his, uh, his freakishly attention to detail. How excited are we oh my for God. him and Barry oh, Take? How excited are we? I think I want to scream. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I mean, we've worked with Michael in so many different ways and in so many different, you know, situations, good, great, not so great. You know, it's been like, we've been there for each other for Casada and the Nash Sherman brand at the time. And now that he's coming up with his own brand, I mean, to me, it's like, if it was mine, you know, yeah. um, I'm feeling his same um, emotions, his same excitement. Um, we're feeling it too here at Casada Cigars because what we want is our clients to feel at home here at QC and this is his home. So it's the perfect match. Beautiful. So part of Ferratego is being produced at Casada. Um, well, he, the, 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 fer, the, Ferratego, the first Ferratego is going to be made here. And we're also making the Timeless Prestige, the Timeless Sterling, and the matches the Connecticut and Maduro's that we've been so making. The since forever. Oh, okay. Okay, so you guys are gonna keep that. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah, the only one that's gonna be introduced is the Ferio Tego one. And he he wants to be he wants to do his thing, so I can't reveal any a lot of information, but <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but I know what, what I can say I can say is as elegant as Michael Harcourt's <laughs> which Listen. is a lot to say. <laughs> Listen, you've said it all. Listen, we all understand what that means. <laughs> so what's the one thing that you've learned from Michael? And what's the one thing you believe he's learned from you? 
Well, the one thing I think he has learned from me is that sometimes um, you have to try new things. And even though it doesn't seem like right, you need to try and you need to give it a chance because sometimes he was, you know, and I kind of pushed and pushed, or we kind of pushed, and, and I think that's something that he has learned from us. You know, nice. just give it a little try. You know, I'll come out of the comfort zone and just try. Um, for me, I have learned so many things from Michael, you know, like um, work ethic, um, his passion for things, his love for this, for this industry. Uh, yes. From the very beginning, I met Michael when I used to work at Gloucester Street Cigar Street Cigar Company in Boston, uh, 21 years ago. Nice. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, so we used to work together um, for a little bit because that I was stepping out and he was coming in. But then the relationship kept, you know, like very strong and it kept on growing. So for me, truly, he's my brother. I mean, I could talk to him from cigars to sunflowers, <laughs> and we're gonna be. <laughs> and we're gonna be in a perfect situation because I everything he has to offer is just amazing. Oh, I'm so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so people always ask. I'm pretty sure you've gotten asked a variation of this question, but so when you prep to smoke a new cigar, a new blend. What do you do to get ready for that experience? Do you have any rituals? Do you have any songs you turn on? Because we know you uh, dance, you <laughs> like the new music, like you turn oh the music God. on. What's thing. the process? Well, you know, to smoke new cigars, you have to be like open-minded. Yes. Because obviously everybody has their own tastes. Mm -hmm. And if I go to smoke a new blend with my own tastes and not with an open mind, then it's going to be very biased. So that's the first thing I do when I'm going to smoke a new cigar or a new blend or something that Carlos or Enrique gives me. I kind of open my mind and say, let's not be biased. Let me just, you know, no, not open my Open your mind, guys. Mind. <laughs> <laughs> so that way you have, you know, the opportunity to give the cigar the opportunity um, to to see if it's good or not that good, or if you like it or not. So that way, that's yeah. the first thing I do. Just like open my mind and be open to uh, new opportunities. <laughs> so that way <laughs> it works out better. Um, yes, I believe. So there's not so many things here, you know, and you have to be prepared. Yes, you do. So. Back to the music part. Okay. So no, for me. What do you do? What do you do? What do I, what do, I do? Um honestly, if anybody's ever been on FaceTime or some of I will pace my apartment about four times. Um I I I go back and forth between two humidors. I'm like, I, what am I gonna smoke? And it sounds really stupid to say because I have, a, I have a lot of cigars. It's, I can't make up my mind. So I pace back and forth about four or five times between humidors. I say, forget it. I close my eyes, I grab something and I go to Run the, uh, <laughs> I'll go through the fire escape. So I do a lot of pacing and there's a lot of undecisiveness going on, but I think my prized possessions are some of the cigar tools. So I have more fun and I take more time with selecting what I'm gonna cut my cigar with versus what I'm gonna smoke. I don't know if that's a thing for anybody else, but I was like, am I gonna use this knife? Am I gonna use my my flames or am I gonna use my smoke and yeah, exactly. I don't know. Like <laughs> you know, cutters or all these different tools. <laughs> I think I'm gonna start implementing a little drinking here with the factory. It's gonna it's gonna have to be five o'clock somewhere, even though it's not five o'clock somewhere. You know what? I used to work at a I used to work at a venture capitalist um, company, and on Thursdays, I don't know what it was about Fridays, but on Thursdays at noon, they would roll around with a beer cart, and everybody would get a drink at noon. I don't know if they thought people were just going to okay, leave. Okay, Carlos and Enrique, listen to this very slowly and. Pay attention. <laughs> We're gonna have a cart here. I don't know if it's gonna be beer, but something. <laughs> Did you listen? A cutesy <laughs> cart of goodies. 
<laughs> I'm going to start making that in the box factory. As a no. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> so speaking of fun, you love to dance. And I'm just going to let you know, I'll be stalking all your videos because I don't understand any of the words to any of the songs that you use in your videos. You know what? I, I, think do, I don't speak Spanish. I, think I don't speak Spanish. Spanish. I don't understand, I don't understand anything that's saying. <laughs> it's very wild. I'm like, yeah, that's my jam. What's the, send me the link. I don't know what they're yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I sent it. It sounds good. Uh, yeah. How long have I you been dancing? Say, I always say, I think I've, I mean, it's very fun because I, I, I learn all the songs with my son. And we're always like in this competition, who, who learns it first? So I'm really good at it. <laughs> but I think I, I was born in the wrong um, time because I that's the only music I listen to. Sorry. <laughs> don't talk to me about Phil Collins or any of those people because I don't remember them. I wasn't born in, in that stage of my life. <laughs> like, Never. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. The Bengals, who? No, 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 no. Label Mike, who? No, no. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> so so I'm playing Latin music and I'm all set. Listen, I have to watch. I have to watch the Spanish music I'm listening to. Okay, I might be out here cursing somebody out by accident. Music. I'm going to send you my playlist. When we're done there. Do not, Raquel, do not start a virtual dance party, okay? Because <laughs> count me in. Yes. We're gonna do that in Vegas. Don't worry. You promised. You promised. I love it. I love it. So two more questions. Did you ever dream of becoming a professional in anything other than the family business. Was there anything else you wanted to be? Well, at one point I wanted to be a dermatologist, but I was like really young. And then when I realized, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I never said that to anyone, <laughs> but I, I did want to. But then, but then when I realized, you know, the legacy I had, the history, my grandfather, that I had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with him. And he would smoke cigars with the windows up, in the car and a two hour drive and I would be there and nothing happened and I was as happy as he was. Then I think something like really touched me and said, this is what I really want to do. <laughs> and you know, like my dad always smoked at home in his room and in, in the office. Like even like somebody told me the other day, it's like, I remember you saying like, even the towels at home smell like cigarettes yeah. because the towels are like in the in the past pathway of his office and mm -hmm. in his um, room, so they mm -hmm. smell like cigars. Like if I take a towel and go to your house, it'll it'll smell like a set of cigars. <laughs> so that's you guys got your own scent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so at the end, it wasn't an option for me. I think it runs in my veins, and I'm gonna be here until life gives me the opportunity. I'm sorry. Until you are the queen of the throne, <laughs> princess. <laughs> now, queen tomorrow. <laughs> so, out of all the titles that you you've had, which job title suits your strengths, and which one did you enjoy the most? I think the one I enjoyed the most is the one that I am now, which is you know um, with the private labels and the clients working hand in hand with them one on one. Um, you know, like making them feel at home here at QC and giving them all the um, opportunities that we have um, to make that private labels. And also, so it's, in, so, it's, so it's sales. And also with the, our own brands, I also do like the international markets um, to sell. So I think that, as I said before, I'm really happy on the decision that Casal Cigars is right now. Um, I think we couldn't have done it better. Um, we're like booming and at the peak, and we're here to work hard and keep on getting Casas cigars in the market for you, all of you, um, to give it a try. That's awesome. So you're gonna. I want you to leave us with something that you've never told anyone. Okay. Um, One piece of advice that Papa Q has given you that you have not told anyone else. Mm -hmm. No one. You're gonna tell it to me. 
Um, <laughs> I think it's when you're blending, you're blending not for your taste, but you're blending for the client's taste. So you really have to have that into consideration. Always think about not whatever you like, but everybody else's palate. So that's something he really tells me a whole lot that I've never shared with anyone else. <laughs> wow. So Aww. I love you, Daddy. We love you, Papa Q. <laughs> All the cues. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. We've had a great well, time. Guys, we always have a good time, and it's only going to elevate next week when we get in the same room oh, together. Yes. After so long. So guys, oh, God. I got hives. I'm excited. Okay. I was telling um, Need my fix. yesterday that really, for me, I mean, my first IPCPR was Cincinnati back in 1997. So it's been a while, but I think I feel that this is going to be my first one since it's been so long and I haven't seen everybody for such a long time. I think I'm so excited as it was my first one. <laughs> yes, we're going to we're going to be out of control. So, <laughs> yeah, well, guys, well, thank you guys for tuning in to Boba to Unbox Live with myself and the heiress of the Quesada Cigar Empire. We have enjoyed you guys. Listen. You can catch her next week in Vegas for PCA. She's debuting three new lines. You don't want to miss it. Yes, 1598 is our booth. 1598. And we'll be smoking Oktoberfest too yes. together for the first time. And the Uber, we promise. <laughs> <laughs> and Uber. It's going down. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks, Thank guys. You. See you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye.